Hey, look what we have found A big sound in a small town Far away from the bright lights They're making music every night Discover what is all around A big sound, a big sound. A big sound. Listening to Big Sound Small Town with Sandy Carlton. Today on Big Sound Small Town, I is my pleasure to have Reese Palmer here with the Earl Scruggs Music Festival, and she just got through with a killer set. Thank you, I appreciate that. Was it hot? Yes, sir. <laughs> did they have water today? They did. Uh, like, thank God. Well, I know yesterday they were they juggling around. around. Yeah. Well, they just didn't have it on stage, oh. and people were like, "I'm dying, dying. up here." Yeah. 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 Okay, I got to ask you with the. So the Barbie movie is so huge these days. See, I told you Joe wouldn't ask you this. The Barbie movies are so good. Did you realize when when you were doing the Barbie stuff that it would be this big? I mean, no. Listen, <laughs> I just went because I am a child of the eighties. Right. Barbie was life. Yeah. When I was a child, and so I was just expecting, you know, something cute, something funny, a lot of pink. I was not at all prepared to have like an existential crisis while sitting there watching 
dolls. Right. But it's such a good movie. It is. It's a really good movie. But now tell people your connection with Barbie. So, <laughs> that is so funny. Like, you know your stuff. <laughs> I, when I was in, I wasn't even in college anymore. I left college to pursue music full right. time. And I was like, oh, I was like 19, 20, something like that. And in between all the jobs that I had, I worked retail, I worked for a mortgage firm, I was a beer girl. Well, I used to sing Barbie commercials. Right. I, th- I mean, <laughs> that is so cool. I mean, t- today, with with the advent of the movie. Oh, I know. Oh, it's just, I mean, how ironic they is that? They don't even know. Like, I've oh, played really? some of the stuff, and they're just like, whatever. Oh, but that's yeah. funny. That's hilarious. I did. I also got another one for you that Uh-oh. Joe wouldn't ask. Yeah. How do you say no to uh, Jimmy Jam, Fly Time. <laughs> Reluctantly. I, I, um, so when I was 19, you did your research. When I was 19. I told you I was a fan. That's good. <laughs> no, you're good. When I was 19, I was offered a deal from Terry Lewis and Jimmy Jam yeah. um, to be on their imprint. They had an yeah. imprint with Clive Davis. Yeah, yeah. Actually. And um, so like all the people. And they didn't want me to do country. They wanted me to do um, pop. Yeah. And I just felt really strongly about the path that I was on. Right. And so I ended up turning the deal down. But I'll tell you this. So about three years ago, um, I was invited to the opening of the National Museum of African American Music in Mm -hmm. Nashville. And they had like a big... um, like a little like a party before right. where you could go through the museum and Terry Lewis and Jimmy Jam were there and I had not seen them oh, since literally you. since I was like 19 so I walked over and I was just like I'm sure you don't remember me I said but um, I'm Reese Palmer and he said and, and Terry smiled and he said of course I remember you the only woman that's ever turned it's exactly I, I knew that was probably I did not know that but I can just so yeah. see that you know no and he said that we Really proud of you for sticking to your gun. Well, I, I, and that's what I was going to say. The fact that you held with your convictions and your beliefs. Well, I, at this point, it looks like a, a wonderful, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah no, I mean, you made the right choice, I think. We've made full circle. And, like, I think, you know, I'm not, I would never say because I have, I have all the respect for country music and, and bluegrass artists and all that. And so I definitely don't consider myself to be a traditional. Yeah country artist or any of that but I have a tremendous amount of respect for the music sure and I'm really grateful for the opportunities that I've been given in right order to educate and sure. to educate myself right and to help other people like that's been really a blessing and I don't know that I'd be able to do that in any well, other had you gone with yeah had I gone but and that at, else. at 19 that, that is hard to oh, turn down I mean I mean <laughs> Christmas was rough for a few years. Yeah, everybody's and, like, and, you turned down what? Well, yeah, and I don't think, I I personally probably do not know anyone that has that strong enough resolve to say, ah, no, I'm not, no, no, I'm not going to do that. I mean. It was scary. I mean, I'll be honest with you. It was very scary. I mean, that is as big time as you can almost get at that age. Yeah, no, it was, and then nothing came for years. Oh, what, did so you have, then, a, did you have a second thoughts about that? Oh, yeah, all the time. <laughs> yeah. But, like, not if I said that I, you know, I was completely resolved because right. it wasn't, and like I said, I didn't get signed until like seven years later. Yeah. So I, you know, I had no idea what was coming. That was really cool. I mean, and and, and what what you're doing is really cool. Actually, it's kind of cooler. That would have been an easier way. Yes. You know, it would have been. Yeah, it would have been. I mean, um, and your life would have probably been totally different. Very. You know, all the like everything. Yeah, it's like those you know those movies where the butterfly someone steps on a butterfly yeah. and it changes everything. Yeah, like, it would have been like that kind of thing. But it looks like you know it it, it looks like it was the right choice. It, it's a good life. Like I'm I'm very blessed, so oh. I, I'm I'm not upset about any of that. That's good. Is it hard to work out of Durham? I mean, to travel from Durham? No, I love Durham. I was just saying, I, it's one of my favorite places I've ever lived. Durham's pretty cool. It's a great place. I have a grandson who graduated from college, and, and he works in Durham, and he likes it, you know? Yeah, it's a good place. So, yeah, he thought it is. Both my babies are born there. Like, it's a good, it's a good place. It is a good place. Um, 
I play some blues music, so Piedmont blues has been a big yes. influence on my life, yes. and there's tons of that oh there. God. You know, yes. I mean, it's almost like a the North Carolina capital of it. Kind of, yeah. yeah. I didn't realize how many blues artists were based and from that area. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really been really it's kind of a minor part of blues history. It is that in the upstate of South Carolina. I mean, people miss a part part of that because they they see the bigger picture of the Chicago, right. or even or even we back it all the way down to. Um, Deep South. Yeah, Mississippi. Yeah, Mississippi. Uh, yeah. They see that. That's real visible, but they, they miss that. I think North Carolina gets missed for a lot of that stuff. They, like, there's so much good music that comes from North Carolina. Yeah, oh, there is. There's so much so talent. Much. So much talent here of just about any genre yeah. you want to you want to look at. I mean, I've made a, a whole podcast about the different types of music that and the different people that play music here. And and yeah, it's wonderful. It's 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 awesome. It's inspiring. It it really. You could always sing though, didn't you? I mean, you realize early on in your life that you could sing. I knew I wanted to. I think the moment that I realized, like I knew early, like at two, that I'd love to sing. Right. But I realized the power of singing. Oh yeah, there is a lot of power. Yeah, when I was like, I think I was four, and I sang. Jesus loves me. Yeah. At the Easter program when I was four, and like just watching everybody's reaction, and I was like, I must have more of this. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I it, need this all the time. Sure. So that was that was the start. That yeah. was the trouble, right? There. Yeah, man, it, and it is. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's uh, as much as blessing as music is, it's a curse it a is. bit too. I mean, can you can make it That's to my. You make it to my age, and you still want to be playing and still yeah. doing it. And it's like, you know, and I remember my parents telling me at one point, you know that music stuff, will, you'll grow out of that, right? It's like, <laughs> you still waiting? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, I think everyone in my family is still waiting for that to happen. But, but you know, it's a, it's a beautiful thing, too. It is. It, music is, music has changed my life. Life without it. Without it, yeah. I don't even know what that looks like. Are your children musical? Both of them. Really? They sing very well. Are you, so are you're they're artsy. She draws. Grace drew this. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I'm impressed. That's good work. She's good. So, you know, it's one of those those things where, you know, you wonder if you want your, your kids to go into that, you know, or not. Um, I think for my baby. They have a different struggle sure. than I would, than I did because they have me. True. So I can always tell them don't do that. True, you can. That's a terrible idea. Right. That's a great idea. So yeah, I I don't. Um, I'm not as scared for right. them as like my parents were for me. Sure. They had no idea. They yeah. weren't. In the music they weren't in the music business no. at all, were they? Did they sing or anything? No. The the person that sings in my family was my father's mother. Okay. Um, my grandmother, Bertha, um, she used to sing the choir, and she was incredible. And actually, when she was young, um, the gospel caravans came through yeah. her church in Georgia, and um, they wanted her to come on the caravan, and her her aunt was raising her, and she was like, you can't sing. No, we're sing. not going <laughs> to. <laughs> so, you can't go out there with those sinners in the music business. And so she ended up just singing at church. I mean, she I was can- an incredible singer. That's kind of where I got mine from was my grandmother, and it was sitting on a porch, and it would be really hot, uh-huh. and we would you'd have to wait for the house to cool down. We yes. didn't have air conditioning, so it would have to cool down and had screen doors, and we'd sit outside, and my grandmother would, would play, and I would learn. I actually, probably the first stuff I learned was were, were hymns, uh-huh. you know, and, and it's just because I liked them. I had no, it was no... You know, it could have been any. She could have sang anything, yeah. and I would have been. Oh yeah, I like this. We're going to do this, you know. But it happened to be hymns. So, so uh, over the years, I've uh, at times have, have played funerals and all, just because I've learned those hymns as a child, mm-hmm. not because it is something that I just know them, and and it's because of her. Yeah. No, those are often the first songs. My band and I. 
we have band rehearsal. We'll just, <laughs> someone will say one word and we'll all just simultaneously break out into church hymns. Sure. Because we all were raised in church yeah. and like all raised on those songs. So yeah. that's exactly what you mean. Well, yeah, and that's another thing, too. Your band probably focuses better than mine. <clears throat> we'll also come in there to rehearse something, and somebody will start just playing yes. a, a riff of something different, and we'll do something totally and different than what... All the way over here yeah. for 10 minutes. Yeah. And, and it's not even what we came to do. Exactly. It's not even what we do normally. Yes. You know, it's like, well, we don't even play this stuff, but we love it, you know, but we don't yeah. play it, so... Well, that's the kind of stuff that happens whenever musicians get together. True. Like that's, that's, to me, the beauty of having musicians around. It, it it is now songs did you start writing songs at some point i started writing really young like i was um even before i could actually literally write right i would write songs. make up songs mm-hmm. yeah i had a tape recorder um i'm dating myself because i had a little mini play school tape recorder and for christmas they gave me like 20 tapes 20 yeah tapes, yeah and they were full by new year <laughs> That's great, though. Yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, I, I interviewed Pete Warning, and he teaches people to play banjo just as a jam, not to not as the learning the scales and stuff yeah. to make it fun. And it, and and I think beside being driven, I, I think music has to be fun. It has to be because if it's not, it becomes well, just it something. Comes work. It comes work. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And there's a work that goes in it, but still, it's 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 love work. It is. It's, it's something that you don't really, you're not really thinking about. What What do you have going on? You got something new in the works? I'm actually working on a record right now, and um, I kind of knew okay. that, but I wanted you to promote it. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm working on a new record right now. Um, we just released a new single this year called "Still Here," mm-hmm. and um, that's a part of this new record. Okay. Um, the record it should be done, Lord, Good Lord Willing, and Preet Don't Rise. Um, by early summer, that's good. Late spring, yeah. Um, we're hoping to get in the studio like the beginning of the year. Yeah, that's good. So I'm then. Yeah, I, I really, you're working on other projects with. I'm always working on. I projects. knew you were. Um, I mean, I am. I'm curating a few um, really big projects that I'm very excited about in Nashville. Um, that I can't. I hate when artists do this on my show. I can't talk about. Oh, but, um, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's okay if you can. No, I mean, I understand that coming. too. But um, no, I'm just I'm doing a lot of writing right now, and um, like I said, it's really awesome. Like having the radio show and being an artist and doing all these different things has opened up a lot of doors for me mm-hmm. to do other things. So like I'm curating, right? And um, doing mentorship. Sure, and that's sort of beautiful so too. How how is Nashville? I mean. You know, Nashville is changing every oh day. It, it's just, you know, I don't know when you go there, you know, is that a joy to go there? Or do you kind of like, I am, yeah. Um, I, so I lived in Nashville. Sure. Steady for six years. And um, the apartment building that I live in, that I used to live in, it's not even, been, like, it, you could barely recognize Sure, it's not the same so Nashville. by, like, skyscrapers. Um, Nashville is different. It's different for me now, but I think it's different for me because I don't have the same pressure on me that I did when I was younger. True. It was really important to me to be, you know, I want to be famous. I want right. to make it. I want to be big. And now it's just more so like, I just want to make stuff that I can be proud of. I just want to make the music yeah. and, and it be what it is. Yes. And so like, you know, I, I have a very... Take me as I am, yeah. Kind of attitude about all of it, and so I enjoy Nashville. Again. I, I was wondering then if, at, when you were out there, were you were you having to mold them, or were they molding you they into? Me. Yeah, I mean, I kind of figured that, but I wanted you to say it. You no, know, I was definitely being molded. Yeah, and it's not that way anymore. It's great. Yeah, I mean, That's I would think I that would be. Sure. Yeah, that would have to take a lot of pressure off and allow you to really be you. Yeah. Sure. Everybody's an acquired taste. Well, I mean, I think that's great. And I, I also like the path that you're taking. I mean, you know, it, it is country, but it's not. Yeah, it's a and, lot of and, and that's that's a beautiful thing. I mean, um, I mean, there's a lot of music in Nashville that people don't realize is not country, too. I mean, it's full of, of uh, 
all types of music. Right. So, yeah, it was, um, I don't think you have to label it because your stuff is just good. Well, thank you. And, and I think that's the bottom line. You can call it what you want to call it, but it's just good music. No, I appreciate that. And I, I think that, again, that's one of the really beautiful outcomes of leaving and coming back is that I'm making the kind of music I want to. Yeah. And I'm not really worried about a, a label or, or yeah, where it's going to fall right. or whatever. Like, I'm just making the stuff that I love. You do the opera, too, though. I have. And yeah. How is that? Amazing. Every right. time. I mean, that's an interchangeable thing, right? Oh I mean, I mean this, I, I've seen several versions, and it's not the same, you know? Yeah. But yeah, it's cool, yeah. but I mean, it's the beauty of it. Yeah. You know? 100%. So, you know, so that's good. Yeah. Thank you for taking the time oh, to do this. Thank you for talking to me. This uh, is fun. All right. Thank you. Couldn't see my strength